Hey guys, I'm Aaron and this is SketchUp Square One where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp. Today, we're taking a look at the outliner. So there are those who'd call the outliner an intermediate or advanced tool. I would suggest keeping an eye on it, at least watching it right from the beginning. The outliner is going to make it easier for you to organize and, and keep your objects in your model where they should be. Using the, the outliner is going to make for a more organized, usable, easier to modify model in the long run. Let's take a look at how it works. Okay, so on my, on my screen here, I have a couple things. I have Sumele over at the left, I have a set of boxes, and I have a set of cylinders. Okay, so let's look at how this information shows up in outliner. So the first things first, when I select my boxes here, this is why I have my entity info open so I can see what this is. This is a group. If I double click and I open it, I can see in that group I have a bunch of other groups. So I have four copies of this box group in a group which contains the set. Over here, if I click on the cylinders, I can see it's a component. If I double click in, each of these, comp these cylinders is a separate component. Okay, so Sumele is a component, boxes are a group, cylinders are components. If I look in Outliner here, so you can see I have my Outliner window open. I'm on Mac, so I have these floating windows. Uh, Entity Info and Outliner are open. If you're on Windows, it's gonna be a little different because you'll have the tab bar. These are both in the default tab bar. So all I have to do is have them open. Um, so let's look at what this is. So if I pick on one, if I pick on my set of boxes, you can see the group is highlighted. And if I drop this down, I have boxes below. Same with cylinders. If I pick the cylinder and hit the little down arrow to the left, here's all the cylinders inside this set of cylinders component. Um, it does work like an outline. Like I said, it's collapsible. As I go through and nest multiple layer, layers deep, I can always come in here and collapse them up. This is really nice when you get a full model so I have all my doors and windows and walls and roofs and framing materials and furniture, entourage, whatever that is. This makes it real easy to work with because I only have to see the level that I need to see. So if I have a bunch of nested groups for all my different sections of the house, I can have those collapsed and just work in the one that I see here. So it's real nice for visualizing and seeing your model. It's also a nice way to select in your model. So again, I have a whole bunch of stuff. I want to just get one cylinder. Um, I don't have to come through, find it, net, click through a bunch of things. I can actually just pick on it right in, in outline. So if I can just come to Sumele and I'm just going to click on Sumele. Look, Sumele is highlighted. If I want to edit Sumele, I just double click and now I'm editing Sumele. So it, this makes it super easy to navigate your model using the outline because you can get right to the thing you want to modify. Same with these cylinders. So if I come in here and I pick one cylinder, look, it goes into context. So I'm inside the group or inside the component set of cylinders and I have that one cylinder selected. To edit it, I just double click. And now I'm actually editing that one. So I'm editing geometry of that one component. I can also change information about items from here. So you can see I, I do have names for my boxes. So if I pick one of these boxes, it is just called box, but the group itself is not named. So if I pick group, while it's highlighted, if I just single click another time, it's going to prompt me for a name. So I'm just going to call it set of boxes. Follow my naming convention uh, with the cylinders. So now that is the name of that, com that group. You'll notice there is a different little signal here or uh, icon here for components. Components get this little cluster of four boxes whereas groups are just one solid box. That's why you can tell a difference. So just, just at a glance like this, I can look over and I can tell without having anything selected, my cylinders and sumele are both components. My boxes are in a group. I can also turn things on and off. So I can actually click this little eyeball to hide things. You can see when, when they're turned off, they're actually, the text is grayed out. So it's, it's harder to see. And I can actually turn everything off. That's cool. That's I mean, but that's not that's not anything we couldn't do with, uh, you know, hiding. I could select stuff and say hide. But the nice thing about this is if you're using Outliner, it's so easy to bring it right back on. In fact, I can do things like I can turn off one item inside of a group or component. This is 
super nice because this gives me a lot of control over what's visible and getting things back is as simple as clicking the little eye icon. A lot of new users end up liking that hide command because look, I can just right click and I can say hi to any point. It's great, it gets it out of the way. And then they go to the forum and go, okay, I hid half my house and now I can't get it back. Outliner makes it super simple because it's just a click to bring it right back just like that. Once you do have a full model, so it's like I was talking about before, all the different pieces and multiple layers of nesting, that kind of stuff, it can be hard to find things. That's where search comes in. So if I wanna look for where, where's anything that I have a box, if I type in box, it's going to hide, not, not hide like turn off visibility, but uh, get rid of it in the outliner temporarily, anything that doesn't have the term box in it. So in this case, I just see my boxes, my cylinders and sumele went away in the outliner. They didn't disappear from the model. They're not gone. They're just hidden right now. This red text indicates that you're searching and these are the results that contained your search request. To clear it, I can just hit the X. I have this little fly out over here. If I click on that, pretty simple options here. I have the option of sorting by name. If I turn that off, it's gonna uh, sort by not name. I don't know what this sorting is. Maybe it's the age of the item in the model. And then I can expand or collapse everything. So that'll take it as collapsed as it can get, or it'll expand everything out. Like I said, once you have a full model, that might be three, four, five, six, 20 levels deep, and it can be quite the outline. Overall, Outliner is much easier to use and far more powerful than people give it credit for. It's a great tool to start using right at the beginning and it is something that you want to keep an eye on as you're modeling because like I said, an organized model is a good model, especially if you have to do any kind of collaboration or ever share your work with other people. So I know there's people out there saying, but there's other things you can do with Outliner. I get it. There is a lot of stuff you can do. Uh, we just did a video, a uh, skill builder just a few weeks ago about um, moving things in hierarchy, that sort of thing. This is a square one video. I wanted to start with the basics. This is the basics of using Outliner. Maybe we'll do a second one after we've gone through a couple more things and we can get into some more advanced things. But right now, the basics of Outliner help you to see, organize, and get to objects inside your model. Did you like that video? If so, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Most, if not all of our content nowadays is created based on comments from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.